Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Looking at the monarch butterflies, they truly are the canary in the coal mine as far as what's going on in Mother Nature and the heavy impact that climate change is having on everything on planet Earth. And we need to prepare the next generations, but at the same time to sensitize and educate them as what needs to be done. And a gentleman we have with us, William, he goes by Bill H. Dent. He's the program manager of the Monarch Sister School program and also the executive director of Natural Partners. Bill, welcome back to the Emerald Planet TV. Dr. Sam, it's always great to be with you. Thanks for having me again. And the work you're doing is absolutely outstanding. But tell us about Natural Partners and why did uh, your organization actually create the Monarch Sister Schools program? Okay, well, first of all, Natural Partners um, actually began in 2003. Uh, it was got its start in Brazil. And there, the idea was to bring together environmentalists with the business community. Uh, there, they had been at loggerheads, they weren't speaking with one another, and I always felt there was common ground. So uh, we made that happen and did some significant work on the Atlantic rainforest. Then, uh, a few years later, I happened to have an intern from Mexico who's doing his degree in environmental law at American University, and I said to him, find out what's happening to the forests. I've heard they're Ill logging the forest where the monarchs go, the beloved monarchs. And he found out and it happened to be World Wildlife Fund and uh, worked with them. And But I realized that we really needed to involve the next generation, the young people who are going to inherit some of the mess that we've left. And um, So this has been uh, the whole basic idea behind the Monarch Sister Schools program and why the Monarch and it's because um, there's a real environmental problem that we're losing our pollinators. Uh, we've had a major drop in our pollinators. In the case of the Monarchs, their populations dropped 95% over the last few decades. Now looking at the pollinator gardens and way stations, this is something that's really important. Uh, to have, but why is it important to have such pollinator gardens? And really, what are they? Okay. Well, pollinators, like other wildlife, need habitat. And we humans have managed to decimate much of their habitat. In the case of the monarch butterfly uh, here in North America, about 90% of the farmlands use a form of Roundup, mm -hmm. which wipes out the native plants and only leaves the Roundup Ready varieties of corn and soybeans. So the whole idea as the first part of our program is let's start restoring habitat and let's involve the kids, the students at the schools. Mm -hmm. So we plant pollinator gardens to provide our pollinators with what they need, uh, their native plants. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the various varieties, you really focus on native species. One, why native species? And secondly, why such a wide variety of vegetation you're putting in both the pollinator gardens and the way stations? Yeah, well, um, our native pollinators prefer native 
plants, that is plants that, are, that were always in this area. That's what they originally liked. And it's good to have a variety because some flower at different times of the year. That's a good thing because uh, the pollinators need nectar to sustain themselves, whether it's um, a hummingbird, a butterfly, or the various types of bees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the uh, some of these, uh, again, way stations and pollinator gardens, uh, we're just showing some of the plants that are in there. What is so important about these plants that have been selected uh, to be in these two forms of ways of taking care of the pollinators? Well, this, for example, the red columbine is a native species. It's a perennial. It'll come back every year, which is good. It doesn't rely on humans replanting annuals. Um, we give preference to those that provide abundant nectar. And uh, one of the things that most of our pollinator gardens will have at least a dozen different species. Mm -hmm. We, and that's, there are certain requirements that go into getting the certification as a way station. And I think everyone captures the concept of, because in the case of the monarchs in particular, they move from place to place. Mm -hmm. So these are little islands that we've restored of native habitat with native plants. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really interesting, uh, you have the various types of milkweed. You only think of milkweed as a almost a monolithic plant, but it really there's uh, different varieties of those. But uh, looking at the planting of the milkweed and having the schools involved, why match these two up? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, it creates awareness. But above all, we want to connect children with nature. Most kids these days are on their devices or video games or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they've lost the connection that you and I had when we were growing up with nature. It was just there and we went out and enjoyed it. So uh, we're bringing nature to the school and it's an opportunity for them to get to know, well, what, uh, get to know about plants, what's a host plant, why are these plants important? What's the connection between the plants and the animals? Uh, and this happened to be the first school in Southeast Washington where we planted our first garden. Mm -hmm. And this was a particular interesting one. Not only did it have the plants necessary, but we made it, designed it in the format layout of a butterfly. <laughs> That's absolutely fantastic. Now looking at the these host plants and we see the various activities that the uh, children are doing right now. Uh, what are what are they doing and why is it important? Yeah, well, as it says at the top, uh, this is a part of the garden where there's a stand of common milkweed. Common milkweed happens to be the favorite of the various varieties of milkweed. In the previous slide showed swamp milkweed. Uh, milkweed, all of them are host plants to the monarchs just happens to be that the females do prefer the common milkweed and the larvae thrive on it. And the leaves are very big, so there's plenty to eat mm -hmm. and they need a lot to eat. <laughs> they're very hungry and, uh, and the students, it looks like they're doing their daily logs and looking uh, at the larvae and uh, how they're expanding and growing and then eventually looking, of course, for the monarchs to come out of their their growth pattern. But tying in Mexico, why tie Mexico together uh, with the schools in Washington, D.C., uh, Southern Maryland, and Northern Virginia? Sure. Well, the monarch is a shared species. Uh, it's the only migrating butterfly in North America. So it's shared by Canada, U.S., and Mexico. And the monarchs actually spend half of their time in Mexico, about four and a half months. Mm -hmm. So they migrate down there, uh, leaving late September, early October, arrive in Mexico, right around the Day of the Dead, the beginning of November. And uh, it's a wonderful bridge uh, across peoples. Mm -hmm. Instead of building walls, we like to build bridges, right? Well, and the monarchs are perfect at that because they don't worry about walls anyway. They can fly over. No, they can and fly right over them. <laughs> they keep going. Now, looking at these schools as uh, tree nurseries, this is, I think, is 
a, a brilliant idea. It's a wonderful concept. Why have the nurseries at the schools? But first of all, what is a tree nursery? A tree nursery is literally where the seeds that are collected from various varieties of trees, native trees, um, are germinated. And then they go through a few stages uh, from seedling to sapling till they're large enough to actually be taken up and to reforest, to replant an area of the Monarch Biosphere Reserve. There, there's a reserve that was created over 20 years ago, uh, specifically because that's the forest where the monarchs go in the winter. And amazingly, they find their ways back to the very same groves of trees. Now, looking at this, these are OMLs, and this is the, the tree that the monarchs seem to like the best. So mm -hmm. why have this and not other native species in the nurseries at the schools? We actually raise anywhere from four to six different species. They're all conifers, um, various types of pines and firs. O OML is actually a type of fir tree. Mm -hmm. um, so even though it doesn't show here, we do work with uh, several different native species. Mm -hmm. And it's very important because we're also teaching children about sustainable forestry. Mm -hmm. Parts of the reserve are no touch zones that have to be preserved because those are the areas where the monarchs go specifically. But the surrounding areas, the buffer zone, is commercially exploitable. And the local communities depend on commercial forestry, uh, sustainable forestry. As what, are, what are these students actually learning by planting the trees themselves? And how does that carry over to what they take home to their parents, their grandparents, and the people within their local communities there in Mexico? Well, these are rural communities. So they are tending, this is an activity that can be of commercial and you know economic interest to them. Um, and again, it's a connection with nature because if they live in one of the local towns, they may not have really ever been out to the forest. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we found that over 95% of the students had never gone up to see the monarchs up in the sanctuaries, as they're called, in the reserve, where they gather by the millions. Yeah, and this is something that I found uh, most amazing when we went with you several years ago that none of the parents, zero, none of the parents had been to the World Heritage Site, which is literally almost next door to some of their homes. And uh, so we invited them to join us there and they just loved it. And it seems like it's made a huge change. Looking at these students working together, what other skills, and we gotta be quick, Bill, we're running out of time. So what other sure. skills are they learning at the same time they're planting these uh, OML trees? Well, the whole idea of working as a team, preparing the job in advance, they have to organize the uh, saplings that are gonna be planted. Uh, they need to understand that this the timing that it has to be done at the beginning of the rainy season. And they get to see that, you know, what you plant today may not come to fruition for many years, but today is the best day to plant that tree. Absolutely. All right, we're going to go out. You've got about 10 seconds. Why is it important to have the teachers going back and forth through these uh, programs, uh, sister schools, sister school, United States and Mexico? Okay. Well, for many of the teachers, they have a passion for the monarchs. They've had that integrated into their curriculum. And to actually go there and go up and see in the sanctuary the millions of butterflies is something very special for them. But just as importantly, seeing the local children with whom we do the cultural exchange is a very moving experience for them. Yes. This is uh, Bill Dent of uh, the Monarch Sister School program as we look around the globe to create the Emerald Planet.